So, what was that we have discussed? Anyone? So, uh, last class we thought about the. Uh... Uh, that github thing and then we also did uh mux and encoder hmm. ladder okay today yes. uh let's see uh st structural structural modeling so what we are going to discuss is structural modeling okay okay sir. So before we go to that structural modeling, let's understand this, how it is. So here it is uh, this way. Uh, you have already one module. So, using that module, let's say you have here your full adder module. So, this full adder module has got three inputs A, B, C in A. Uh, so you have B and you have C in and uh, we have got here sum and carry out. So using this, if we are if we are developing, this is one bit full adder, right? Are you people there? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This is one bit uh, full adder. So, if at all you wanted to add four bit, four bits, four bit adder, four bit adder you want. So, A has got four bit, A operand, B operand has got four bit. So, you wanted to add them. So, using this one bit full adder. So, let's do the exercise that we learned in digital electronics. So A has got something like this, 0, 1, 0, 1. Your B has got, let's say, 0, 0, 1, 1. So now when you perform the addition here, you add this 1 plus 1. So sum is 0, carry out here. So this is your carry out here. Here we'll write carry out CO. And this one is your sum here. Now 1 plus 0. 1 plus 0 is sum is 1. And that sum is added with this one. 1 plus 1. So what you are going to get is sum 0 carry out 1 here. Now, this 1 plus 1, that is sum 0, carry out is 1. And that sum here, at this stage here, when you add these two bits, 1 plus 1, sum is 0. So, you have the sum here. That sum is added with this 0. 0 plus 0 is 0. Now, here you have these three bits. So you add them here. So what is that we are observing here is this carry is propagated here for from the first stage. From the first stage, first stage you do not have any carry here. This is this if you consider as a first stage, you do not have any carry. Carry first carry in is zero. Now, second stage, if you consider this second stage, what is happening is from the first stage. From the first stage, carry is given here to the second stage. That is what this carry is here. 
and then from second stage to the third stage carry is given if carry is generated that will go to the third stage so that's how uh, you know the addition binary addition is happening so the same thing if you try to put here using this one bit full adder it is something like this you have one instance of one bit full adder here this is your one bit full adder and second instance of one bit full adder again third instance of one bit full adder fourth instance of one bit full adder to first instance of one bit full adder what you will do you will apply your see here look at this one this a and b a is a vector type now so a of 0 and b of 0 this this one lsb bits so going to here this is your let's say this is a of 0 and your b of zero. and what you get here is your sum of 0 you get here your sum of 0 and from the first stage you can observe the carry generated is going to the second stage as carry in. Initial carry in here, that is C in, we have as a zero. Initially, we don't have any carry here. This second stage carry is going here as an input to the next stage. And this next stage is getting here A of 1 and B of B of so now what we are doing here is this is your sum of one from this stage that is second stage this is a, this is zeroth stage or this is first stage this is second stage third stage like that if you call this is sum of one and here, this from the first zeroth stage, let us call zeroth stage. This is the first stage. From the first stage, the carry generated will go to the second stage here. So carry generated will be going here. And what you will give here is your A of 2. And you give here your B of 2. And the same thing here, that is from the this second stage, that is sum generated is called sum of two. Now from this stage, the that is second stage, if carry, if any carry, that carry will be going to the third stage here. So here carry generated will be going to this stage. Now here at this point, you have this your A of 3 and B of 3. Your B of 3. So at this point, the sum generated is sum of 3. So your sum of 3. And last stage, from last stage also, there is a possibility of carry out. So that is carry out here straight away directly you can take this carry out here so here that is carry out see so what you are going to have here in your four bit adder four bit adder using single uh, bit or one bit adder four instances of this is first instance this this is this is your first instance this is your second instance this is your third instance this is your fourth instance four instances of one bit full adder that is one thing that we have to understand second thing is how we are applying our inputs that we have to understand to the first instance you are applying your lsb bits here and this one is not having any in, uh, carry in. So carry in that you apply here is zero. Now in the second stage, the, from the first stage, whatever the carry generated is going as the input here. 
in internally it is going see uh this is these are the these are shown outside the block block here this block you know this uh, rectangular block is there na? outside i have shown here and uh, all of these inputs also i have shown outside all of these inputs also i have shown out, uh, outside of the rectangular block but uh, intermediate carry that intermediate this is the rectangular uh, block that i am talking about this one but intermediate carry that is generated it is not shown outside it is internally going it is so what we can do here from the past uh, knowledge this can be declared as a wire here these are wires one bit na these are wire this is wire you can name it as a, some name here uh, you can name it as a, like like uh, let us say c0 this is c1 this is c2 these are these these are the wires single bit so you don't need to declare them in your Verilog code. Compiler is going to handle them because these are the scalar type, single bit. If you are declaring with a keyword wire, that is not a problem. But if you are not declaring, then also not a problem. But explicitly we have to handle them here, these inputs with a key, keyword input. With a keyword input, we have to handle them. With the keyword output, all of these needs to be handled. These, these variables needs to be handled with the keyword output. Now inside this uh, full adder needs to be instantiated. This needs to be instantiated. How many times? Four times we have to instantiate. And how we are applying first instance is getting LSB. The last one is getting the MSB. Correspondingly, inside they are getting the bits. Making sense this complete discussion? Oh, yes, sir. Somewhere. Huh? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. No, at this point, if you have uh, any doubt, you ask because based on this discussion, we are going to board. That's yes, why, sir. That's why you have to get this one very clearly. Got it? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. If you have got this one, now what we can do is we can go inside this structural level modeling here and uh, we can open two files here. So, two files we have to open new. This uh, text document one and uh, one more text document two, because we uh, one is for design, the other is for a test bench. One more text document is required for full adder. So three text documents. So first, if you rename <coughs> that as the FA dot V, this is the one bit uh, full adder. And the second one that I am going to rename it as a FA four bit. See the naming convention also, convention also I am using uh, relevant conventions. So you have to understand every bit of this, uh, the way you wish avoid uh, naming conventions, you have to use relevant naming conventions. So here see that uh, test bench also how I am naming tb underscore fa 4 bit dot v. So I have, you know, all these files now. So what I can do is I can open by selecting all of them in a notepad. And now I can start coding them here. So what is that I have to code here? I have to code in the full adder. This is the, just a minute. Let me do just keep like this. Now, this is the full adder file here, fa.v. Here I am. So, module. You know, uh, anything will start with a module. So, that is module. 
and we also learn every uh, design will have some name so whatever that design we are carrying same name it will be like fa full adder and it has got three inputs a comma b comma c in and it has got two outputs some comma co and every module will have n so this is known to us from our so far learning and the type declaration is carried here input a comma b comma c in and output some comma co so again i repeat here module is a keyword and uh, opening the parenthesis like this and closing the parenthesis putting a semicolon is part of the syntax inside the parenthesis putting this uh, list port list it is called port list we are we are separating them with a comma that is the syntax and the name uh, fa is a user defined now we are type declaration we are carrying out here input a comma b comma c in input is a keyword here and output is a, is a keyword here so now here the design is carried out the way we want here the way we want means it can be at a, a gate level or it can be at data flow level modeling so today what we are going to see is you got to know from our past two sessions three sessions there are keywords that are available them we are using to describe the any any boolean expression so full adder has got some boolean expression from that boolean expression we know what gates are uh, needed so them we are using here those are uh, those keywords are there in the language then we are calling gate primitives what we are calling them we are calling gate primitives so this we have seen in the past past sessions now what we are going to do is we are going to use something called data flow modeling so here this is uh, in data flow modeling what we are going to do is we we are going to use operators we use we use two things here in data flow modeling two things one is assign keyword is used assign this is a keyword assign is a keyword assign this keyword is used. assign keyword is used second what is used is operators operators are used so we use operators we use so we will learn these operators in subsequent classes many uh, operators for now uh, pay attention how we are using we are using here this way assign keyword sum equal to a xor this is the this caret symbol this caret symbol is a this caret symbol is a for XOR operation. B XOR C in semicolon. Now assign for C O that is carry out for C O. We know the Boolean expression. We only have to use appropriate operators. So first, what we do is A ampersand B this ampersand is used for and operation and then r operator this vertical bar, bar is a r operator then a ampersand c in so this is again and gate and then we are going to use r here r operation logical r operation so now here B ampersand C in. This is straight away implementation of Boolean expression. This is straight away implementation of Boolean expression. So here, this is for, this is called AND operation. This is, this is 
this is used to implement the bitwise and operation bitwise bitwise means in a whatever bits are there let's say in a we have 101 like that in b we have uh, let's say 011 so here bitwise operation will be done here bitwise this two bits and this two bits like that so that is bitwise operation so this is bitwise operator, bitwise and operation. This is bitwise or operation. This is like that. So here uh, we, we are doing, what we are doing here, we are describing the full adder using data flow modeling, using data flow modeling. So I repeat this again. Any module will start with a keyword module space module name. Open the parenthesis here. Inside the parenthesis, put the port list. Only here primary inputs and primary outputs are kept. Remember that. So primary inputs and primary output means here if you look at this one here. If you look at this one here. These are primary inputs here. These are your primary inputs. These are your primary inputs. And these are your primary outputs here. This sum and final C. <laughs> this CO. This CO is your primary output. But not this one here. CO, this, this C0. This C0, this C1, this C2. It is coming as output from the first full adder here and going as input to the second one here. This is an intermediate signal. This C1 is coming as output from this second stage and going as input to the third stage here. C2 uh, is coming as output from the third stage and going as input to the fourth stage. So these are what? Intermediate signals. They are not part of primary input nor primary output. They are not part of that. Only these are the parts. These are the parts of primary inputs and primary outputs. Outside this rectangular box. Intermediate signals are not part of primary inputs nor part of primary output. Making sense this one what I am saying? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So that's what we have done here. We are we we only have to put here in this uh, list what we have to put here only primary inputs and primary outputs we have to list here, not intermediate signals here. So then we are, we are declaring here, and then we are coming to here uh, this kind of uh, modeling. This kind of modeling modeling is description. This kind of description is called data flow modeling, wherein we primarily use two things here. One is assign keyword, the other is operators we use. There are different operators in subsequent classes, we'll discuss more about that. So once it is done, then we have to do with this end module. So that completes our full adder. So now what we have to do according to this one here, we only have to instantiate that full adder here. How many times? Four times we have to instantiate and pass on appropriately this A of 0, B of 0, A of 1, B of 1, A of 2, B of 2, A of 3, B of 3, appropriately to the corresponding here instance we have to pass. And from the corresponding in the instance of this full adder, we have to take the requ required output also like this. So let us see how we are going to do that one now. So go to this file, FA4bit. Again, you will start with the module. And this one is a relevant name, FA4bit. And here I am going to have a comma b comma sum comma c o these are my primary inputs and primary outputs input this input is a 
is a bus type. It is a bus type. It is a vector. So vector declaration is carried like this. So three colon zero. A comma B semicolon. And uh, some also is a bus type. Is a vector. So it is declared like this. It is declared like this. Now with separate keyword output, we have to declare this CO. If you put CO here itself, here itself, thinking that with one keyword I can finish off, but this property of uh, vector will be applicable here, not only to the sum, it is also applicable to the CO. In such case, you can put CO first and then uh, later on vector you can keep like this also but sometimes we may make a mistake that's why vector all vector type of same size with the one keyword output separately you can have another output in case if you have for example let's say uh, yeah one, two bit some other vector is there you can have separately that uh, that uh, variable like let's say that is c1 like that you can have with the separate output instead of mixing we may make mistakes so that's why what we are doing here is this co output with the with the keyword output we are again declaring if we don't use this vector type here we have to do this way input a3 a3 a4 a2 a1, A0, like that. And then similarly, that B3, B2, B1, B0. This one is, you know, verbose it is. So several uh, variables are there. So to avoid this one, we can have this bus approach, that is vector approach, instead of scalar approach. So, the, is that making sense? Sir, why there is a zero, sir? Why there is a zero here? Yes, sir. Uh -huh. So, that one, I have to remove this one now. This is, uh... Okay. So, now pay attention here. So what we have taken here is this one. You can put here 0, colon 3. This is also permissible. I will talk about that now shortly. You can put here minus 2, minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1. So here, like that also you can put. You can put here... Uh, so many ways it is uh, like possible here. You can put here like, like let's say seven, eight, uh, nine, ten. So what you can do is seven colon ten. Like that also possible. So in this case, what it is going to do is if you put like this here, input, input. And the vector size you are declaring like this, the way shown here, like this if you do, and you put here A comma B. In the in such case, what it is going to do is A of 0 is your MSB. A of 0 is your MSB. A of 3 is your LSB. In this case, in this case, that is minus 2 colon 1. A of minus 2 is your MSB. A of 1 is going to be your LSB. In this case, like, uh, you know, I I pick it up here like, like this for no reason. Just I pick it up like this 7 colon 10. And then I'm keeping A comma B. In that case, my A of 7 is MSB. My A of... Uh, 10 is uh, going to be LSB. 
so that's how this is the language is facilitating so many ways to uh, you know uh, put this uh, what we call this uh, vector size here so what is recommended among all of this is if you uh, look at the human psychology so human psychology whenever we say msp we think of some uh, bigger number whenever we say some lsb we think of some lesser number so putting a here like 3 and putting like 0 here it is more uh, recommended uh, uh, way of uh, you know vector uh, declaration than putting a uh, 0 colon 3 or some other earlier I discussed putting a minus 2 uh, colon 1. Maybe some uh, need if there in some some uh, big project you are doing some uh, need arises. There it is facilitating, language is facilitating, you can benefit out of that. So is that making sense now how it is? Yes, sir. To everyone? Yes, sir. So now what we have done is earlier as discussed, so in a rectangular box, you, you have seen four, uh, you know, instances of uh, uh, full adder being instantiated. That is what now we have to do here because your type declaration, yeah, primary inputs have come, your type declaration, primary outputs have come. Only thing is just you use this, you know, four times that full adder, that's all. So how we are going to do is this this full adder here, if you look at this full adder, this is the name. FA is the name. And these are the port list. So I'm just copying this and coming here and pasting it here. This is one time. This is the second time. This is the uh, third time. This is the fourth time that I have pasted. Now, as I told earlier, every instance needs to be having some name. So I'm calling it as instance one. Any name you can have, by the way, instance two, that is user defined. This one is user defined. Instance three and uh, instance uh, four. So done. Now, appropriately, we have to pass this, uh, our primary inputs. And appropriately, we have to relate our primary outputs here. So as just now we've seen, we discussed here, what you do here, what you apply here basically is, you are going to ap apply here your A of 0 to this first one. You are going to apply here A of 0. And you are going to apply here B of 0. And what you are going to get here is your sum of zero. Your sum of zero you are going to get. And what you are getting the carry here, I am calling it as, uh, let's say C1, I am calling it as a C1. And what I am going to give here is my C in, carry in, which is zero actually. This, this value is zero, first one. So now here, this one needs to be binded. This one needs to be binded with the A of 0. This one needs to be binded with the B of 0. This is 0. We don't have any C in. This is 0. And this needs to be binded with sum of 0. And this needs to be binded with C1. So let us do that one. So A of 0. And then you bind it with B of 0. And you don't have this one. So this is one tick B zero. This is this number system is a base format. There are two ways to use the number system that we will see later on. Uh, for now, you have to understand this is the base format system wherein we are telling that this number is in binary with the help of this B. And the size of this number is only one bit. That we are telling. And this is a part of syntax. This one is a part of syntax. This is just above the, uh, where it is uh, left side to the enter key. The right hand side you have the enter key or right hand side there is a shift key on your keyboard. Above that you have single quote and double quote. The single quote if you press this, this kind of thing you will get. 
So one tick P is zero. Basically telling that this is a binary number. This zero is a binary number. And the size of this zero is only one bit. That is what we are telling. And here we have to bind this sum with the sum of zero. And this one I am going to bind with C1. So that is what I have done here This for, for the first, first instance. Now the second instance, what I do, second instance, this C1 is going as an input here. And here I am going to take here, what I am going to take here, A of 1. Here I am going to take A of 1. And I am going to take here B of, here A of 0, B of 0 over A of 1 and B of 1. And what I get here is sum of 1. And from this stage that carry out is C2. So that is what I have to do. So here now A of 1. And here B of 1. And here this C in is actually C1. And this sum of 1. And this is C2. So this one also done. This one done. This is C2. C2. This C2. That is done. A of 1 is binded. B of 1 is binded. And the output is sum 1. C1 is also binded here. Now comes the third stage. To third stage, what I have to give A of 2, B of 2, and what I get here is sum of 2, and this is C3 going to the fourth stage. So let's do that here A of 2, and uh, this is B of 2, and this one is C2. And this is your sum of two. And here it is C3. Now what to do last one here, fourth stage. A of 0 over, A of 1 over, A of 2 here over, finished. Now only A of 3 is there. So that A of 3 and B of 3 will go here. And what is coming here as a carry in C3 is coming. So... That is here, we are going to do that one. A of 3, B of 3, and this is C3, and this is sum of 3, and this final one is this CO only, this CO only, this final output here, yeah, that, that is, this is your sum of 2, this is your sum 3, and from the final stage, what comes is you actually carry out CO. That is output, primary output only, that is. So that is CO. Making sense till this point? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Now we, we, we have finished. See, this is done. Earlier what I have discussed is over now, finished. So in the rectangular box here, I told that four instances are required over. We did not write any logic. Logic is there inside this FA, full adder. This inside this FA. We only have called them and connected appropriately. Calling them is called technically instantiation. So the instance is done here. And appropriately we binded this force here. That's all. So we are not going to write any logic in a structural level modeling. So our module needs to be now ended with the end module. So this is also done. Now final thing what is left is we have to write the test bench. So control S I am doing to save this. And this kind of modeling is called this kind of modeling is called structural modeling. Structural modeling. Here, you only insta instantiate what you do. Instantiate the existing modules. 
modules modules in the top module this is also called top module because f4 bit is the top module and this is the lower module not top module so this is our top module. and in the top module when you are talking about the structural modeling you did not write any logic here you only connected appropriately these ports you have passed appropriately you only have instantiated the existing module of fit that's all so now we have to test this so we already have discussed several times backward time scale is one thing which is going to tell compiler that use the scale in nanoseconds it is a compiler directive it is a compiler directive backward time scale is a compiler directive space one ns is a time unit one ps is a time precision now module test bench also starts with a module tb underscore f a 4 bit this is user defined name the recommended name is this this is how recommended it is like what what you are testing that way you have to put and then here i told here that the inputs that are there here they will become rich and the outputs that are there in the module that you are going to test they will become the wire here so this input will become the wrench here and this output will become the wire wire here so this is also wire now this is done after that what we have to do we have to we have to put a initial it is a procedural construct executed only once in the uh, during simulation time inside inside whatever statements procedural statements you keep them they will be executed sequentially in the begin and end if multiple statements are there once this is done at the end of this you also have to put your end module so inside this here begin and end what we are going to do we are going to have several statements so those statements are primarily to display on the console so what we wanted to display the value of A, the value of B, the value of some, the value of C. So for that, dollar monitor. Dollar monitor. What is dollar monitor? It is a system task. Inside the parenthesis, what you are going to do is, what is that you wanted to display on the console that you put in double quotes? I wanted to uh, display time, this uh, at the rate time. And I wanted to display the simulation time, that is percentage G. Is a format is specified for the time. That is in nanoseconds. So N S. N S is not compulsory. It is for my reference. But percentage G is compulsory. And then and then this column or comma, it is up to the user wish. What is that how he wanted to see in the console? So what I want to see now, I want to see A and B values. So A equal to, how is that I wanted to display? I wanted to display in a uh, decimal format, percentage D. I wanted to display in octal format, percentage O. I wanted to display in hexadecimal format, percentage H. But for now, I wanted to display in a binary form. Then that is A value, comma, comma, and then B value also I wanted to display in uh, binary. And then I wanted to display carry out in binary. And I wanted to display, after, after that I wanted to display my sum. That is also in binary I wanted to display. Because I am going carrying binary uh, addition. So it will be easy for me to evaluate looking at that. 
If I put in decimal, all that, then again, conversions are required. So that's why I'm keeping like that. Now, correspond to this percentage G, percentage B, percentage B, percentage B, all that, we have to tell the compiler, relate these to these variables. So I wanted to relate here, percentage G with the dollar time. Dollar time, what it does, it returns the simulation time. And uh, then A comma B comma C O comma sum. That's how the order is here that I have kept here. If I put sum uh, first, then it will be displaying on the console C O, but the value that I am seeing will be of uh, sum if I put sum here. So be careful of that. Now, what is that I wanted to do? This is for console over. Now, what is that I wanted to do? I had to apply inputs. Now, that earlier, the method that uh, several times used to, we used to apply, na, that I am little bit now advancing now. Instead of doing that way, we are going to have some advanced way of, uh, you know, uh, generating this AB values. So with the help of loop, for loop, um, or repeat loop also I can use. So let's repeat, uh, repeat. for now let's repeat. Uh, 10 values, let's take 10 values. And uh, I'm going to have multiple statements, so I'm putting a begin and end here again. So what is that I wanted to generate first is value of A. How I wanted to generate A uh, is going to take total 0 to 15. B is going to take 0 to 15. For A 0, I have to evaluate all B value 0 to 15. For A1, all values for B uh, 0 to 15. So that's going to be a, you know, a huge amount of, uh, you know, analysis uh, is required on the console. So I don't want to do that. One. I wanted to generate randomly and I want to ensure that my design is working perfectly. So for that, I am using this dollar unsigned, dollar unsigned, here, open the parenthesis, dollar random, and close this here. Here also, you open parenthesis, open the parenthesis, dollar unsigned, and then open the parenthesis, dollar random, then close the parenthesis, close the parenthesis. Then modulus operator, this modulus operator I am using. And then I am putting a 16 here. What it does is basically, dollar random generates a, signed numbers 32 bit signed number this dollar random but i don't want any signed numbers to be generated i want uh, all unsigned numbers so i am getting that one done with this dollar unsigned so that's how it is now this modulus 16 what it is doing is it is going to produce uh you know total 16 uh, possible, uh, what we call this uh, a reminder here. If you use uh, this one, it is going to return the, uh, what we call that quotient value, whatever the quotient is there. But we wanted to generate values from this, uh, you know, uh, all possible cases with the help of this uh, 16, if you could able to do the division, the modulus that reminder comes, will be, uh, you know, that lies in between 0 to 50. So for that, we, we may have to increase this uh, repeat, uh, maybe uh, so uh, in case if you are not seeing all the values 0 to 15, then repeat may go up to 15 or 20 also. So, but the advantage of doing so is randomly you are going to generate some values and randomly you are going to verify your design. Instead of, you know, generating a all uh, zero to 15 values for the, all this, B also needs to be generated. So that is, as I told, it is uh, going to generate the huge number of output results on the console. Again, analyzing will be a tedious job. To avoid that, we do this kind of uh, randomization. And here I am just copying and pasting this one here. I will change this variable to B. Now what I do is I give some delay here, hash Y. And then 
what ha what is happening here is this is this one this repeat 10 times it is going to happen when it comes here this is generated randomly some value here b is getting some randomly some value and a delay of uh, this uh, 5 will be there so countdown will happen again it will go back here again same pro procedure is done again after delay of 5 again it will go back there making sense this one how it is uh, happening here this repeat loop so once can you press can you be a bit louder so once can you just uh, repeat this one, one repeat loop at least uh, i repeat this one see to generate a and b the earlier how we used to do means uh, a equal to zero comma b equal to zero then we use it to give hash five delay then we use it to go uh, to the next uh, a equal to one then see for a zero to 15 b still zero so all that so what i mean is when a is zero when a is still zero let's say a is still zero we have to check for b zero for b one for b two all that till till oh wait till 15 till 15 why b is four bits na? B is going to take 4 bits. 4 bits means 2 power 4. 2 power 4 means 2 power 4 equal to 16. 16 means in a digital. Custom is to start with 0 and go till this 15. The, you know, total values are 0 to 15 means 16. So, it means what? For A0, B, all the 16 we have to check. And then for A1, A equal to 1. Again, for B, all this we have to check. All this again we have to check. Uh, paste it here. Like that, down if you go here, A equal to 15, you have to check all this. Imagine how big it will be, you know, manually writing down that kind of, you know, giving the delays and all. Each time, you know, this first with this combination being given, then next A0 and B1 combination, you know, giving the delays and then going for this and then going for that. Like that 15 into 15, 255 such combinations. We have to, you know, manually produce with all those delays that earlier we I have demonstrated for MUX, for uh, half adder, for full adder, last sessions that I have demonstrated. That way we have to do. Making sense this one at least. Yes, sir. Oh, okay. Now to avoid this kind of uh, laborious job, language has facilitated us other mechanisms too. We can use any any one. For loop also is there that we'll see uh, some other day. For now, repeat ten. So what it does this repeat loop ten times? It is going to execute itself here this this one inside whatever you keep if single statement begin and end is not required here multiple statements i have this statement i have this statement i have this statement so i need this begin and end is required this begin and this end is required so now what i am going to do here begin and end inside i am going to generate a value randomly one random number will be generated by the com uh, compiler, the simulator, Verilog simulator, that is compiler. Verilog simulator or Verilog compiler is going to generate dollar $random is a function. It is going to generate some random numbers. These random numbers are generated uh, signed numbers. They are 32-bit signed numbers. This is 32-bit signed uh, numbers it is going to generate. I don't want signed numbers means how I can convert the signed numbers to unsigned using this one, dollar unsigned. Okay, converted. But those are the 32 bit means huge numbers. Nah? So big numbers. I don't want that big numbers. What I want is 
if i divide by 16 whatever the remainder comes na that i wanted to take meaning that remainder will fall between less than the 16 only you you take any big number and divide with whatever the number that you wanted to uh, uh, see the of that limit should come you take that uh, as a, you know this is uh, you have two numbers a divided by b a is a, uh, this is a, this is a d dividend and you have b is a uh, divisor divisor now you, a this d, dividend is a some big number what you want to see is that you want to see out of this when you divide, you want to see the uh, result that is, uh, I mean, the uh, yeah result that you want to see in some limited range, some limited range. What is that limited that range that you want to see? So that number you put here at the divisor. Now, take, do the division, uh, analyze its uh, uh, Re remainder. So we after this this division, you are going to get two, two things. One is a uh, quotient. You are going to get one minute. Somebody at door. I'll just uh, I'll I'll be back. One minute. Okay, you have quotient, and uh, the other is your remainder. So now, uh, as I said, that you want to see the uh, you know result in uh, some range. So that range is what this remainder uh, you know you will see if you put this this operator. This is this is going to return the remainder. This is going to return. If you put uh, this one here instead of uh, this operator, if you put this operator, it is going to uh, return the quotient. But I, I am going to put here not that operator. This operator I am going to put uh, just now I kept now that is percentage. This this operator. This operator is going to return the remainder. And this remainder will fall in this range only. Making sense? Yes, sir. Now got the point. Sir. Yes, sir. So now what is that we are going to do? How many such remainders we are going to produce? 10 we are going to produce. Why this, this repeat loop is helping us to produce such 10 with a, with a delay of 5. Now manually, instead of doing earlier what I have shown, instead of that, this loop is going to produce some random numbers for us. Making sense or not? Yes, sir. Srinivas, making sense? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So now you have generated with the help of this. This one dollar monitor is going to help you to display on the console. And this repeat, uh, this one going to produce, uh, generate the required inputs. That is the stimuli generated here. Since you have done with this job, now what you can do is, well, once you come out of this begin and end loop, then you can here stop your uh, simulation with a delay, like I'm just giving the delay of hash y, and then dollar stop, so dollar stop and a semicolon. So this, this begin has got end here. And this begin, this begin, after initial, this begin, this has got end here. And this end module is of this module. So that's how we have completed this today, this advanced test bench. Now I'm saving this one. I'm saving this control S. I'm saving this control S. Is that done? Yes, sir. Okay. Now yes, sir. I'm closing this one, going here and going to the structural modeling. 
and uh, opening here this open in terminal now i am going to create here you can see there is no work uh, folder here we lib space work so this is going to create a work folder here now i am going to compile v log space f a dot v f a 4 bit dot v t b underscore f a 4 bit dot bit so press enter if any mistakes are there, those mistakes can be seen here. If no mistakes, then it will give error zero, warning zero, like that. So now what we have to do is, see, you people are making mistakes. Here, here you carefully observe. I don't know what you people really doing there sitting. I am sharing a, this recording also with you. Neither you are watching the recording nor paying attention here and doing mistakes and saying that I'm not getting See here, the top level modules here mentioned. One is 4-bit, FA 4-bit. The other is TB underscore FA 4-bit. So what is that we wanted to simulate? This one we wanted to simulate, this one. Not this, this one. So neither we wanted to simulate this dot V ex extended file. You people are doing here, what you are doing is VSIM hyphen C then you uh, somebody typing here that dot v extended one somebody typing something else meaningless so v sim hyphen c then this is the one this test bench one test bench module name that module that we wanted to copy just select this right click it will be copied now you come here where you wanted to paste just right click it will be pasted there and then press enter so once it is uh, like, uh, you know, for simulation we have prepared and now we can run. This is the, we are preparing for simulation and now we are running it. So run space hyphen all press enter. So now what you see here is you have A value, you have B value generated, but for some reason you are not getting C, O. CO you are getting, if you observe here, all that is uh, Z, 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 Z. So Verilog has got uh, four values, logic 0, logic 1, X means unknown, Z means high impedance. So what we are getting here is all high impedance we are getting here. All high impedance here. So we have to check our... Uh, you know, code again. Let's uh, verify once. Here, uh, see, uh, one more important point here. Though we have compiled with uh, with uh, zero errors, zero errors and zero warnings, but still we are not getting our result. Often students say, yes, I compiled, no errors, <laughs> no warnings, but still I am not getting the output. Are bhai, you have to understand. What you have to understand? Inside logic, your simulator is not going to tell you, Baba, you made that mistake, this mistake. Only it is syntax that it is going to check. So we made some logical, uh, log I mean, logic development error. So for that, we are not getting. Syntax point of view, it is correct. So that point, you have to grow up and you have to understand thing that way. Now, I am, um, see, exit here. From the simulator, we, uh, this vSIM simulator, I am uh, typing, exit to come out of that. So now uh, I am out of that simulator now. I am just minimizing this and uh, selecting this uh, three files. Right click, edit notepad. Now let us verify why is that not getting here. First this A, B, C in some C, O. Is that correct that we have correct logic here that you verify and sure once. Uh, sum is assigned uh, here. A, X or B, X or C in. And uh, you have used here A, B, C in. You have used sum and C, O. And uh, A ampersand B, A ampersand C in, and B ampersand C in. That is correct here. This FA logic is correct. Now what we are going to do, checking this one. So if you check this one here, you have A, B, 
that is you have declared here uh, i will i will zoom this one uh, you have declared this a b here with the vectors that is correct output sum that is correct and output co that is also correct so four times you are instantiating here a of 0 and b of 0 you are passing here values that is correct and one tick b 0 what you are going to do that is also correct so in the test bench here the thing is we did not uh, instantiate the module that we wanted to verify that is the mistake so this we have to copy come to the test bench here before like after reg after while before initial in between this we have to call the module that we wanted to test so that we did not do so i put here dut making sense now uh, what was the mistake okay, yes, sir. Yes, sir. is that clear to everyone yes sir Okay, now save this control. Yes, save this one and uh, close this one and uh, go to this one again and uh, clear screen, CLS clear screen. Since you have made changes, you have to uh, compile again. You don't need to do VLIB uh, again. VLIB already work folder is there. So only compile. So you have compiled this. Now VSM here. And then see earlier, earlier it was showing two modules here. Now the only module is TB underscore FA forward because I have called that sub that has become the sub module now. Earlier it was showing here FA for uh, FA four bit also, but now that FA four bit has become the sub module inside this TB underscore FA four bit. That's why the top module is only one now. TB underscore FA four bit. So now we are going to prepare this for the simulation. Press enter. Press enter here. Now run it. Run hyphen all. So now you can see here, you can verify here. So what you can verify is just verify this one. You can add this one here. This is one, this one and zero. This is one and this is zero and this zero and this one this is one and this zero this zero is zero so it is not going to produce any carry out but if you look at this one here this 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 combination so one plus one when you do the lsb side if you look at you get the sum zero carry out will be going to the next stage keep the uh, carry in mind add first to this zero plus zero so if you add 0 plus 0, some 0, and the carry that you have kept in mind, that is 1. So that is 1 here. Now come to the third stage here, third bit. So now uh, from this second stage, we did not get any carry out. From the third stage now, 1 plus 1. So sum is 0. Carry out is there. Carry out 1 has come. Keep that carry in mind, but add now these two bits. 1 plus 1. This is going to produce some 0 carry out. So that carry out is what this 1 you are seeing. And the one that carriage uh, is existing here, that is added with the zero. So zero plus one is one. So that's why this sum is one. Making sense? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So that's all uh, uh, for today because uh, was uh, running out of time already. We eight uh, fifteen now. If you have any uh, doubts, you can uh, ask. Or else we can uh, close this session. Uh, these files, what I do is I just put them in the uh, in the meeting chat. From there, you can copy this one here. Uh, I, I'm copying this one here. Um, I just copied this FA4 bit. Copy. And uh, in the meeting chat here, I am pasting in. Control V and press enter. So you, after once I close the meeting, you can uh, you cannot copy them. You have to copy now only that four bit. And the way I have kept the file names, that way you have to keep your four bit dot V in that. Is, uh, I mean, save that one. 
Now this one also I'm copying this control A, control C. That is uh, though uh, you know by this time how to develop this uh, uh, full adder. But this is since uh, data flow level modeling. So I just um, pasted that code also here. Now I'm going to test bench code. Control A, Control C. That also I'm pasting uh, here. So everyone, uh, please copy these codes and uh, correspondingly you have to appropriately, correspondingly means appropriately, you have to name the files and uh, you have to uh, paste this code there. So that's how you have to keep this one and try the same and ensure that results are correct. So this one, uh, that's what I thought of. Uh, I said that two things I will discuss. I discussed one is advanced way of, uh, you know, writing the test bench. This is the only one, uh, just uh, beginning. Uh, many things that we have to see. Uh, but you practice this one, understand how it is happening. Uh, today, what, uh, like repeat and this, uh, you know, generation of this uh, using dollar random, how we are doing. And understand, so what is the structural modeling also? Okay. So, and uh, this one, once you have simulated and update your GitHub repository as well.